Ed here. Welcome to another edition of Behind the Mask. And Behind the Mask is really just our attempt to really sort of humanize all the people that we see speaking or online, social, all those kind of things is there's real people behind that. And so rather than ask the same old questions that everyone else asks, which are interesting and, and good, Behind the Mask, we just try to get like behind the person a little bit and understand where do they come from? And where are they now? And maybe a little bit about where they're going. So uh, as always, I get to have my friends on the channel. And so this time is no different with uh, George Reynolds, Dr. George Reynolds. So uh, George, welcome to Behind the Mask. Thanks, Ed. Good to be here. So really quick, George, can you give, you've had an illustrious career, have one. And so can you just give a quick overview for those who might not be familiar before we jump right in? Sure. Sure. The idea of it behind the mask is strange because obviously if I was going to put on a mask, it'd, be, it'd look better than this. Um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a recovering pediatric intensivist. I uh, practice critical care um, in, in Southern California and in Omaha, Nebraska for a number of years. Um, ran the pediatric ICU at the Children's Hospital in Omaha, as well as the uh, pediatric ICU at uh, what but is now Nebraska Med. Back when I was there, it was the University of Nebraska Medical Center, which is the largest pediatric liver small bowel transplant program in the country. So that was that was interesting. Um, and uh, through no fault of my own, um, I wound up in IT. Um, and there's there's a story behind it. But I kind of I, I inelegantly say that I oozed my way into IT. I just kind of, hey, George knows something about computers. Let's put him on this selection process, and let's send him to this thing, and let's and let's buy this, or you know. And and then I became like the medical director of IT, and then then the, the idea of a chief medical information officer became a title, and so they oh, that, that's what George does. Let's give him that title. And then my CIO left for greener pastures, and they said, "Well, do you want to do her job too?" And I said, "Well, can I have her money too?" And when the laughter died down, I said, "Okay, I'll do it anyway." So I became the CIO and the CMIO, um, and. Uh, uh, Decided I'd, I'd had uh, I'd done enough of that, and so I quote retired uh, in 2015. Wound up working for Chime, uh, running their clinical informatics uh, programs, and and you know teaching on on the various boot camp faculties at the CIO boot camp, um, and did uh, do some independent consulting, uh, mostly. Mo not entirely, but mostly for Epic customers, uh, usually in either analytics uh, and, and governance or physician engagement tends to play my, my, obviously my value in the marketplace has much more to do with the fact that I'm a, a, a doc than it is that I was a CIO for a, a small children's hospital. No, that, that's great. And yeah, that's where you and I connected was in the boot camps. Yeah. And I just thought you were like pretty great person. Think you are a great person, great leader. And, um, you know, and, and the things that you've been doing for the industry for so many years have really helped us sort of accelerate where we want to go. So at what age, Thanks. George, obviously you're a leader. At what age did you realize you were a leader? Was there like an aha moment? Um, there wasn't an aha moment. Um, I, I, I did my residency and fellowship at LA Children's, which at the time was the largest pediatric ICU in the United States. And so when I did my fellowship there, uh, today ICUs, adult ICUs are run very much like pediatric ICUs. They have intensivists and, and it's a team-based approach. Back then, uh, the adult ICU world was the anesthesiologist came in. Maybe he's a person who intubated the patient. The pulmonologist ran the ventilator and the cardiologist ran the drips. So you had this kind of you know, management by committee and there wasn't, a, a, there wasn't really a team-based approach. Pediatrics was never like that. Um, I don't remember my my board certificate for Beats Critical Care is like number six hundred and something. So you know it, it was very early on in yeah. in people being pediatric intensivists and running a you know going on team based rounds and leading a team um, was the first time I figured out this this is fun this is you know I I could be good at this so I, I think that's probably when it when it when it dawned on me. What what is one thing that your parents may have forced you to do? And at the time you're like, oh man, really, I gotta do this. But in hindsight, you're like, dang, I'm glad they did that. Uh 
but usually they tried to get me to not do things more than they forced me to do things. <laughs> stop driving fast, stop wrecking your car, yeah. you know, stuff like that. <laughs> um, you know, the only thing I could think of was, was catechism. Um, that was not my favorite thing to do, but you know, <laughs> no. not a very, not a very great answer. Sorry. No, no, that's fine. That, that's, that's good. Uh, what was the single biggest reason you chose healthcare and specifically as a doc? I'm weird. You knew that already, but yeah, other that. people don't. Um, yeah. Um, I knew I wanted to be a doctor. Um, certainly by the time I was a freshman in high school. Um, and I also knew I wanted to be a pediatrician. Now, lots of people go into medical school and think they know what they want to do. Only 10% of them actually do what they think they want to do when they start out. Now, I thought I wanted to be a general pediatrician in a nice little town in central California, somewhere in, in you know, in, in the Paso Robles wine country or something like that. That was kind of my vision. So this idea of being a pediatric intensivist had not, I didn't know that thing existed when I started, but but I always knew I wanted to be a, a pediatrician. What is one thing that the majority of your coworkers, we can pick on Chime, where you spent the last many years. What's one thing about yourself that not even they know? You know, you're not gonna like this answer, but the answer is probably nothing because I, you know, I'm, there is no mask. I kind of, what, what you see is what you get. And I, you know, there aren't, there aren't a whole lot of secrets. So. So George, what is your defining moment? Was there like a defining moment somewhere in your life, could have been as a kid, an adult, that sort of changed your trajectory or made it more sharp? Um, I don't know that, well, yeah, it, it, meeting my wife. Um, meeting my wife, getting married, that certainly changed my tra trajectory. It's been the one really smart thing I ever did in my life. Um, and, uh, uh, We've been married 42 years. Yeah, that's awesome. And congratulations. So when we think about sort of like that's your background, sort of where you came from and sort of what are you doing now and, and more contemporary? Has there what was the last time like you cried? Are you an emotional person? Oh yeah. I'm you know, you know, that line in 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 uh uh Love Actually where Jude Law says, I'm a weeper. I'm a I'm a weeper. Okay. I, I weep at at, at at watching Love Actually. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's awesome was there ever something that you really wanted and didn't get um not no no i'm i mean i'm uh, you know silly stuff um yeah i always wanted to have a, a red barchetta uh you know, stuff like that, but yeah. nothing, no, nothing now, important. Is that Red Barchetta? Is are you a Rush fan? Oh yeah. So huge Rush fan. Yeah, that's, that's my, many, many times. That's my favorite song from Rush. Yeah. So that's a good so when you said Red Barchetta, I said I haven't that's heard great. anyone say that except for Getty Lee. <laughs> <laughs> what about a thank you card? Is there tell us about the last time you either wrote a thank you card or received one? The last time I received one was this week, and it was somebody um, that I used to work with at at uh, Omaha Children's, who who was changing changing up her career and just wanted to thank me for the thing th the things I taught her along the way. Um, last one I wrote, I think, was to my sister. Cool. What? I know one of your hobbies is cooking. Uh, so where did that come from? Um, I'm, I don't know. I I've, I've always liked. Well, obviously, I like to eat, um, <laughs> and and I've and I and I like to cook. Um, and I think it got kind of you know it was a pandemic thing. Um, uh, some somebody sent me a link to uh, uh, a Facebook group called uh, Shelter in Place Cooking, um, <laughs> and it turns out. There, there, there's an informaticist I met at uh, Scripps in San Diego. He's now in San Francisco. His name's Matt Sakamoto, and and he posted that thing. My sister-in-law is on it. it you know, and none of them, none of them found it from me. They just all found it different ways. So, it's just it's just a thing to stick on 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 Facebook. You know, well, 
I see some of the meals and I'm like, dang, when, when's uh, George going to invite Zimmer and I over? So you know, everybody always says, well, when are you going to open a restaurant? And I'm like, that's work. I don't, I don't want to do work. This is, this is for fun. So yeah, that would probably restaurant, restaurant people work hard. Yeah. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. So if you're chatting to the next generation, what's one thing that you would tell them to really relish? You know, maybe something that you rushed through when you were younger in your career uh, so that they should like, hey, when you get to that point, just relish the moment. Um, I when I when I teach, you know, the boot camps or the or, or the clinical informatics stuff, I I often urge them to go back home and take out an old fashioned legal pad and write a line down the middle of it and write love it and hate it and just keep it on your desk for a week or keep it with you as you as you go along on on your on your rounds your duties and and think about you know when are you in the zone and when are you really feeling like this is something I like to do and you go home and you tell your wife or your husband or your significant other um you know I did this today and it was really cool and write down the stuff you hate and then figure out how you can get rid of as much of that stuff that you hate on the one side and do at least spend 20% of your time doing that stuff that you love, because that's going to make a, a huge difference. And sometimes people don't know what that is. It, mm. it usually is what you're good at, but it's not always what you're good at. Sometimes it's just what you enjoy. Um, but that that's what I tell them. Yeah. That's, that's sage advice for anyone at any point in life, for sure. So behind you is Mount Hood. Is there another mountain for you to climb? So you've been climbing a lot of mountains, you know, as a as a physician, a CMIO, CIO, a teacher. Um, you know, what what other sort of things are you looking to do, if any? Uh, well, no, I'm 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 clearly on the downhill slide, and I'm you know, <laughs> uh, but I think. Uh, the you know the pandemic hit all of us hard in different ways and i'm still trying to we're, we're we're going to europe next month for the first time you know i i, I went on a photographic group tour in february of 2020 in iceland um which by the way is freaking cold in february <laughs> you know somebody asked me why'd you go in february i said well because it's really hard to take pictures of ice caves in july <laughs> uh they melt but but boy was it cold um uh, but you know the flight home was just about empty because that just in that week that was when the pandemic hit and we haven't been back since we're going um december 1st so you know we're getting we're getting back out there obviously we you know we've traveled around the country and been to lots and lots of national parks and and that sort of thing but but uh, getting getting to travel more i think is 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 one important thing yeah that's that's really cool i'll look forward to seeing uh, your picture. So again, you, you've done a lot of different things in your in your career. What's what's the one thing, if you could name one, that you're most proud of? Um. Well, the thing I'm most proud of would have to be, I was actually the first fellowship trained pediatric intensivist in the state of Nebraska. Hmm. So so there was a pediatric ICU there. It was all of seven beds in in a, a square footage smaller than my house, um, and you know it's it's now much larger and and a, a new generation has, has has taken the reins. But you know building up that group and 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 providing that level of care in in Omaha was probably the thing I'm most proud of. The thing I had the most fun doing was being CIO. That was the most fun. I it, it just. <laughs> You know, um, when when I when they hired me back in '96, um, I put in the contract that they were going to buy me a clinical information system. We didn't even know to call it an EHR back then, right. but I put it in the contract. You know, when I finally got one. When's that? When I left the ICU and became the CIO, and and put in, in put in Epic. We had right. CPOE, but the nurses were still on paper, and there's a long story yeah. there, but but. You know, so that was the most fun in terms of of, of making a lasting change that, that that people are still using today. But yeah, no, I I love it. Yeah, you're definitely a pioneer, and I love the fact that you're still out there and helping people. Like the thank you card that you mentioned, and certainly with uh, Chime and the different aspects of that. And as you mentioned, on your own sort of consulting. And Chime is Chime is great. I love teaching yeah. these things, and and 
you know, getting the, the faculty together and, and we just, you know, we really have a great time when we're, when we're together. And, and, uh, you know, I've got, I, 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 you know, I know so many great people like you who just are amazing teachers and, yeah. and, and leaders. So it's, it's fun. Yeah. It's very special. Well, George, thank you for spending a little bit of time with us and removing the mask and, and, and getting to know you a little bit deeper <laughs> on the personal side. Uh, again, you know, you're, you're, super person but super interesting as well and 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 a pioneer in our industry so thank you for being with us sure my pleasure